See how big it is. It's massive. Up early this morning on our way to Aswan. We're about to get on the plane. Egypt Air. Swan on our way to look at the Philae Temple. Belay Temple. Uh, we had to come over by boat. Okay. And uh, apparently it was underwater for 70 years. You can see the level of detail. It's on the walls. They've carved in here, literally everywhere. He's got carvings. This is inside the temple. And this is Cleopatra's name, written in hieroglyphics. You can see how big these columns are, and they're all detailed with symbols and hieroglyphics and this when the Christians occupied this area this is actually what they used as an altar in the church so this temple is actually not the proper location they actually had to move it because of the flooding and the British uh, actually paid for it to be moved and they moved every piece by piece and replicated this area uh, apparently it was on an island somewhere out that way level of detail carved into the rock or the limestone. Sitting here in Aswan and in particular at the Philae Temple, having a nice cool beverage because it is quite hot. It's around 40 something degrees, I think they said. And uh, we're in the cafeteria just near the, the temple itself. And there's Chicken Egg. And this is the cafeteria. Looks out over the water. We've just arrived in Aswan and we're staying at the Movenpick 
and uh, we're gonna give you a room tour. There's your bed. Welcome. This is the bathroom. We have a shower on the back. Obviously, here. lavatory or a loo. Little bar area comes into the main bed. Chair to relax on. Come out. Looks at the pool and over the Nile. <laughs> Halfway to Abu Simbel. We've arrived at Abu Simbel and we're about to start our tour. So we're just walking down to the main temple of Abu Simbel and you'll get a, I guess, a better perspective of the sheer size of it as we get a bit closer. So this temple and the temple next to it were actually moved piece by piece uh, in 1967 I think it was it took four years to move and uh, the reason why they moved it is because behind me over here is uh, where it originally was located and uh, it was going to go underwater due to flooding uh, because of a dam so they moved this whole complex um, from down there behind me further to 60 meters uh, higher than where it was originally located and um, yeah that's no mean feat in itself so we're walking up to the front entrance of the temple King Ramses the second you can see the people going in the doorway there originally when it was first discovered by Italian guy the sand it was covered by sand, but the sand was up to the shoulder level of each of these statues. And uh, they had to dig down, obviously, to excavate, excavate the whole area. We're just about to go inside. So on the inside, we have all these inscriptions with Egyptian hieroglyphics and pictures of guys on chariots, guys with bow and arrows hunting and fighting. There's Sharon inside. Inside the Abbey Symbol itself, there's all these little rooms and they've all been carved out with inscriptions and hieroglyphics as well. So that's looking back out towards the entrance. And as we turn around, you can see just behind me in the distance, there's Sharon and there's four statues in there. These four statues are located at the end of the complex. The three on the right receive sunlight. The one on the left is meant to represent um, darkness or nighttime, if you want to call it that. And so he, when the sun reflects in here, it never actually receives any light. And that's one without the head.
so we just left King Ramsey's second um, complex and we're now heading to Nefertiti's I'm pretty sure which is the Queen also his mother and his daughter and all the other things a lot of incest going on a lot of incest happening in the uh, back in the day this is inside there's chicken head and these little tombs or cutouts towards the end of it oh sorry it's a sneak through uh, inscriptions and carvings on the wall Lots of these key symbols. That key was uh, signified importance and it was like their religious symbol. And they had these called katushas, which is generally uh, someone's name. More katushas and symbols on the wall. Thank you. 